Yeah. Yeah. D P P The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. <laughs> Steve, did you want to see something on my phone? Oh, nothing. No, and that's nothing. Did you I'm wanna, I'm good. Did you do you have airplay hooked up in here? Wanna Yeah, can you just throw it up on the screen? Yo, what what do you, would you like me to throw up on the screen? Oh, just you know, stuff that shows me what kind of a man you are. You know? <laughs> oh, Normal wait. conversational <laughs> stuff. You guys, I, I just got a text from Nick Robertson. Oh, oh yeah? He's been saying that that Keith's been making him sh- show his shoes. Oh. He's the, he wants oh. he wants him to take off his shoes and, and air his feet. Show me your feet. He wants to show his feet to the whole whole team. Well, that's because he's we one did, of the We need to go f- out, Keith. It's because Sheldon Keith is one of my fan group, the feet people. Um Okay. You know? No. I'm, I'm glad Montreal. that never caught on. I've, no, it did catch on. No, the it didn't. people exist. It didn't. Hashtag feet. It didn't. None of you. Know. It didn't catch um, on. I, uh, I I did want to say this uh, before we get into the Mike Babcock situation, which obviously we're going to lead with. Uh, Matthew from my DMs in response to last episode. Hey, guys. Uh, in regards to Monday's episode, my friend pooped himself on a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. Oh, you're, no. We were talking about that Steelers picture, right? Oh. And we were wondering, like, what happens when you do that at a public space? Like, what do you do? You walk out pantsless? Do you have to re- rewear your pants? Like, what happens? And they said they gave him a rain poncho and free pickings of the lost and found. <laughs> fair. I, that, I think that's a really good that's play fair. on Wonderland's yeah. part. <laughs> also, yeah, how did you get is. to the point where you told the Wonderland people? Well, because you have no pants, man. White you shorts. Can, imagine you're in a par- you're a grown man in a park without pants on, and you're like with a bunch of kids there. You think that's a good look? What? Where you gotta the, talk at, that. No, no, no. At what point did you lose your pants? Well, what are you, you talking you about? You shit them. Yeah, so I didn't take them off immediately in well, the middle yeah, of the park. Why wouldn't you just wrong with you? The bathroom and you wash the pants? You need to give this person some credit. I'm sure their first idea was hide it. Then when they discovered yeah. they couldn't do that, <laughs> yeah. Then they're like. How about the poncho and lost things? I no, think. my first thing is I'm leaving. Oh, like I'm just done. No, for but the you day? can't. I'm done. I'm you going home through the park with shitty pants. Well, no, the no. good thing about Canada's Wonderland is it only takes about eight to ten seconds to walk through. Yeah. No, oh I'm God. so so you you shit yourself on Behemoth, right? Yeah. You're Which on, is at the back of the park. You're on the ride. You shit yourself. So. May, do you get off of the ride or do you sit there? Well, yeah, you get off the ride. I get off the ride, yeah. and if I and if I can get I up and walk off the ride, then I'm walking all the way home. I'm not I'm sti- not talking to anybody about me <laughs> shitting my pants. This is a great fucking show. I think you need to you need to go to the bathroom and at least wash it because what are you gonna do when you get to your car and you know that parking lot goes for like nah. months? You're not gonna jump in your nah. car or jump on the what is it? The what's the, the four hundred? What's the transit at Vaughn? Because there's everybody's got their own different names. Like, cause there's like the oh, uh, what's Vaughn's? Brampton's got like the the Zoom, the, the Zoom bus, yeah, uh, where everybody's on meetings, and we're going. Hey, thank you for joining us. And oh. Mrs. Zaga's got my way. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. I don't know what Vaughn's is, but you jump. You're not jumping on public transit in Vaughn. You're not jumping on a go bus. You're not jumping in your car with poopy pants. So at some point, you're gonna have to wash them off. The only place to do that is the Wonderland wash. The Viva. The Viva. The Viva. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Right. That's the one in York. That's region. right. Hockey yeah. podcasts are so normal. Like so normal this well, week. I know it's a, it's a bit of a dramatic week. Uh, the other thing is, um, this is uh, for anybody that's looking for something to watch tonight before hockey starts. Jake said, "Yo, I want to thank you for that WeWork uh, recommendation. I watched it this evening. Crazy interesting stuff. You guys have got to watch that WeWork thing with Jared Leto and um, Anne Hathaway. And I know the the, yeah, line, the acting lineup's a, tough. That's a tough. It's sell. a tough sell. But I'm telling you, I don't know enough about Anne Hathaway to dislike her. But I Jared like, Leto. That's for some tough. reason, people don't like Anne Hathaway. I don't understand why." She's nice. I don't know enough about her. Jared Leto's weird. He's yep. like a cult or whatever, but like he's also really good at uh, at portraying this guy who's a weird dude. So you should watch it. Mm. So lean into what you're good at. Are we going to talk be- about Nick Robertson and asking Keith to sh- show, show his feet? feet? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm yeah. going to call, call him out today. <laughs> I don't think we are, man. Okay, so <laughs> yesterday was going normally, and then a clip from Spit and Chicklets went wild. And it was at like fucking nine in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> it was really early. Sorry, it was it was it was normal to me. I'd already been up a few hours, but yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it walked the dogs and that sort of thing. But but so I, I get back and I'm looking at this thing and you know I they have a huge following anyway, so they get a ton of likes and clicks, whatever. But this one kind of stands out because it has to do with Mike Babcock and anything Mike Babcock as a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, we're going to be interested in. But this one set the world on fire, Jesse. Go ahead and play it, please. I will do that. This is 
Uh, <laughs> outrageous, dude. I get a text from a, a player. He goes, have you heard what Babcock is up to again? And I'm like, no. So he gets to Columbus, and one of the first things he does is he calls in Boone Jenner, the captain of the team, and he says, let me see the photos in your phone. I want to know the type of person you are. What the f- is going on is that is that even legal I, I, that's, I, it feels like it's totally I illegal get him on the podcast to grill him about his antics as a head coach like worry about the f- for check worry about your 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 personnel worry about getting the power play humming at an alarming rate so you might have a chicken dicks chance of sneaking in a wild card spot why do you want to see throbbing dick pics <laughs> from your captain on his iphone <laughs> I don't understand this. By the way, if I was going into one of these meetings having heard all these stories prior, I'm putting on like Rocky quotes on my photos. Oh, yeah. I'm putting on like my workout routine. Oh, yeah. You know what I would put on my phone? I'd be <laughs> oh, yeah? standing here in this chair with my <laughs> bin staring at him right says, in the eye. Oh, yeah. You know what's coming. Like this. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with this guy? Now, I hope this story is true because then we look like real big idiots. But I think that Mike Babcock should come on this podcast and yep. clear the air as to why he wants to see pierced nipples from Instagram thoughts in his players' phones. So, uh, they're a little more vulgar than us. It's just a bit. We just talk about shitty pants. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to throw stones in this glass house. (laughs) No. No, I should shut up. No. I should shut Um, up. (laughs) <laughs> so so uh, they invited Mike on the pa- pa- podcast. Strangely enough, As he Mike, <laughs> Mike declined, uh, but he did choose to do the adult thing. And the adult thing, kids, is to argue back over Twitter. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, really not the Columbus Blue Jackets, Mike Babcock and Boone Jenner released a joint statement. First from Mike Babcock, while meeting with our players and staff, I asked them to share our off their phones, family pictures as part of the process of getting to know them better. There was absolutely nothing more to it than that. The way it was portrayed on the Spit and Chicklets podcast was a gross misrepresentation of those meetings and extremely offensive. These meetings have been very important and beneficial, not only for me, but for the players and staff as well. And have uh, and to have them depicted like this is irresponsible and completely inaccurate. Boone Jenner also said, while meeting with Babs, he asked me about my family and where I'm from, my upcoming wedding and hockey-related stuff. He then asked if I had pictures of my family, and I was happy to share some with him. He showed me pictures of his family. I thought it was a great first meeting and a good way for us to build a relationship. Uh, to have that blown out of proportion is truly disappointing. Now, if you if we go further than this, and I'm just going to give mm-hmm. you this this first, and then we're going to jump into oh, it. Oh, yeah. Sure. Now, tell the um, whole story. Aaron Portsline um, did an article, obviously, for The Athletic. Portsy, we've been on this show many times. He's great. Um, he... Uh, he talked to Mike Babcock directly and said, I've been, Mike said, I've been doing this practice for a number of years. As you're trying to get to know players, they're trying to get to know you. You're sharing stuff about you. They're sharing stuff about their families, what's important to them, where they're from. We had a program like this in Detroit and Toronto. It was a really positive thing. I think it's really important to know the guys uh, and for them to get to know you. What was portrayed on the podcast today was just so far from the truth. It isn't funny. It's actually offensive. And then, and I thought you guys would love this last paragraph, Bissonette, in a follow-up to the social media post, did not back away from the way the story was portrayed on the podcast. In fact, he said tons of players confirm it. Contacted by The Athletic, Bissonette uh, disputed Babcock's denial with a profanity. (laughs) the nhl players association contacted for comment and said it is looking into the allegations now we know that johnny gaudreau was interviewed by the media yesterday in henderson because you know famously we make fun of steve for going not to vegas but to henderson um doing it again johnny gaudreau was interviewed by frege and uh um uh, jeff merrick on the 32 thoughts podcast he said it was pretty normal thing Dude, the person i obviously felt worse for in all this was boone jenner but second johnny and very underratedly was johnny gaudreau like every like major hockey media outlet is in the same place right now and he i believe is the lone representative for his team <laughs> yes you wouldn't be doing your job if you didn't ask him about no you have to ask Right. And so now he, I think I want to say he's a former guest of that podcast. Yeah, and it's just mm-hmm. completely hot potato. Yeah, just right into his. He's life. on today's version episode of the podcast, and he said it was Babcock's way of kind of getting to know me. And of I got, chicklets? 
No, no 32, oh, 32, thoughts. Thoughts. 32 thoughts. No, no. So I was saying he's, I think he's a former guest of 32. Uh, of of, of Chick- yeah, yeah. He's been so on Chicklets Chick- before. Yes, yeah. yeah. And they're saying he's at, uh, it was Babcock's way, a kind way of kind of getting to know me. And I got to get to know him. The winger said, I wasn't uncomfortable at all. I was showing him pictures of my family. If I had a problem with it, I would have been like, I don't think I'm comfortable with that, but I had no problem with it. And then they spoke to Bill Daly. Bill Daly said the PA is investigating, which also came out later in the day. Now, Jesse, can you go right back up to, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Johnny Gaudreau's last sentence. Yeah. Uh, Where he says, I would have been like, I don't think I'm comfortable with that, but I had no problem with it. Yes. I think that's a key statement. Hmm. Now, who have we heard from from the players? Who have we heard from on the Columbus side? Boone Jenner and Johnny Gaudreau. And and of course, Mike Babcock himself, right? But I, I did say players. I don't doubt that those guys had a pretty normal conversation. Yeah, and this this I don't know if this adds context or not, but uh, Boone Jenner got married like a month ago at yeah. least, so this this would have been much earlier this summer. Sure, yeah. sure. Now, what I am curious about, and I'm not making an accusation here, but I think it's I think it's relevant. No, make it. No, it's not an accusation. <laughs> Boone Jenner, as far as I know, is on a multi year, multi million dollar contract. Johnny Gaudreau, very publicly on a multi year, multi million dollar contract. I want to hear from fourth line left winger. Right. And then, well, and this has always been the criticism because we know, and he's got a track record of this. This is not stuff that, uh, uh, this is not stuff we're making up. When Mitch Marta was in the doghouse, we all know that story. It's when Johan Franzen, backed up by Chris Chelios later on, called Mike Babcock a bully and said it was terrible playing for him for his mental health, and Chelios backed him up. Mm -hmm. And there's been a few players that have said Mm -hmm. things, but they haven't put their names to it. Um, Very clearly, in the way Mike Babcock previously coached in Detroit and Toronto, and that's all we have to go on, Anaheim too. Don't want to forget about Anaheim. We know that there was a hierarchy, and that players that Mike could not win without, the star players on the team, were treated just a little bit differently from the players that maybe were tweeners. All the complaints have come from players on their way in or on their way out, right? So it's not just a young player problem, which Columbus has a ton of. Like, you know, Mike Commodore was on his way out. Mike Medano was on his way out. Chris Chelios was on his way out. Uh, Jason Spezza to a much lesser degree. uh, with the Well, Mike Mike wanted to make sure he was on his way out. (laughs) Mike tried to make sure he was on his way out. You're on your way out, Jason. wild how good he was for how long he was. Yeah. For the lease. Yeah. It's yeah, completely. And Mike would have wasted that. He would have completely wasted for Nick Shore, man. Like, yeah. And, and who also on his way out at that point, mm-hmm. uh, but less so apparently. So the, the, the reality of it, of it is as of this recording and we have heard things that maybe this story is not going away, but we don't know that remains to be seen as of this recording. It's difficult to say like, you know, everybody wants people to take a side. And there's no, I, I think the waters, waters are muddy enough right now that there's no clear quote unquote side or truth about what happened. We just flat out do not know. But what I, what I do find, I think you got to look at the motivations whenever you see this situation, right? So what are the motivations for, for Biz if, if he comes out and mischaracterizes a story? So let's, let's assume... And, and by the way, I'm not saying that this is true, but let's assume the worst about Paul Bissonnette for a second. Right. And then we're going to do the same exercise, but with the Blue Jackets. Right. So let's assume the worst about Paul Bissonnette. What would Paul Bissonnette have to gain by making up or probably more accurately misconstruing a story like this? Uh, well, you know, he's trying to generate clicks for that, that little startup podcast of his that, that he's just started also. And that doesn't get enormous amounts of clicks regardless no it doesn't get hundreds of thousands of views per episode all the time it, no and they don't regularly get like Sidney crosby and nathan mckinnon and Austin wayne gretzky and wayne gretzky and and he's no. got not only has he got that podcast he's got the nhl and tnt as well right so it's not like biz is you know one of the things one of the criticisms i'll, I'll make is that sometimes the broadcasters of the nhl are too inside with the nhl uh yes and well, so i'm bringing that, something up um <laughs> so so Sorry. so go ahead, go ahead so it's not as though paul bissonette's like we're we're under the gun and we need more clicks right right 
So, you know, maybe you could chalk it up to, again, assuming worst case scenario here. He just felt like he wanted attention on September the 12th. Yes. 2023. One thing I, th- I want to say about this is that I do feel like if anybody in the media knows what the average NHLer is talking about or is well connected to, it's it's Paul Bissonnette. And it doesn't, for better or for worse, the P- Paul Bissonnette is very, very intimately tied to a lot of NHL players currently playing. Yeah. That's obvious. Current and former. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can think what you want about the guy positively or negatively. Like, you cannot take away that he's ex- extremely well connected. Also... He said his piece, uh, the Blue Jackets said their piece, and I was truly alarmed, genuinely alarmed by the complete, complete, and I'm going to stare down the barrel of the camera for this. I'm begging you to get media literate. Holy shit. Like the Blue Jackets released their statement and people went, oh, well, that's that then. So let's ass- holy fucking shit, guys. So let's go ahead and get assume, a brain. Assume the worst about the Blue Jackets. Let's go yeah. deep into that. No, no, here, wait. What? Could, oh, no, no, sorry. Because because the Blue Jackets statement came out, and people were like, "Well, then that's it." So, a guy who's on like the biggest hockey podcast there is, and he's on TNT, tweets the following: "We're a players' podcast. You want to fuck with the players? We're going to bend you over, no spit, no lube, sandpaper finish." You think <laughs> that gets tweeted? And ah, uh, well, just a little, <laughs> just a little screenshot from the Blue Jackets, and this story is done. Mm-hmm. Not a fucking chance, guys. The, imagine, like that's it's the equivalent of imagine Kelly Rudy going on Hockey Night in Canada, going, well, you know what, sandpaper finish. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> all right, <laughs> like it's a little different. There might be some follow up. All right, guys. Can we also? Was, there were some shocking reactions can, yesterday. Can we provide times. the context of Babcock's history of doing this well, as well? I, and that's why I want to talk about. To that point, Jesse, let's get into that. Let's talk about the Blue Jackets' motivations here. Worst case scenario, they're covering this up. Mm-hmm. Jesse, talk about the resume. What is Mike? What were the risks with hiring Mike Babcock for Yarmo Kekalainen? Well, that this something like this would happen. You know, it, it'd go off the rails and immediately nobody likes him and he, they has to be, he has to be but fired before the interestingly, season. Interestingly, when the Leafs hired Shel, uh, Sheldon Keefe or when I, I, when the Ducks hired Greg Cronin, mm-hmm. yeah. this was not something that people would be like, Greg Cronin, he's got a history of that. It's because Mike's done shit, right? Yeah, and people generally don't, within the game, there are some circles that don't enjoy Mike Babcock. I think that's very clear. And with with this history, with this specifically, like he, he does this and has done this for, I guess it's decades because it, it stems back to Detroit. And and Friedman had, had it in his piece here where he says, it's clear after reaching out to as many people as I could, Babcock has asked to see people's family photos, at least going back to his days in Detroit. He did it in Toronto and now he's doing it in Columbus. In some cases, apparently there were family presentations where a player would send pictures, Babcock would put them on a screen and have that player talk about his family to the team. So they're doing like literal class presentations about their photos. It's, it's like elementary school. Yeah. It's, and then I mean, it makes me uncomfortable, but like, is it wrong? No, but this was this was a part that really stood out to me where he says it wasn't just players. He's done it with people on his various staffs while going through Columbus's hiring process. He did it with some of their executives. So, <laughs> consider if you ask that, for family photos during the job interview. Considering well, everything, he, he knew he was getting hired. Come on. Yeah, considering everything that's been reported about Babcock, if a lot of people really hated this, we probably have heard it much sooner. I don't know about I that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I Elliot. disagree with that. Uh, on Tuesday, I've heard from several people who liked it and a couple who didn't. One current player who has never played for Babcock said he'd heard about this recently and it would make him uncomfortable, although he admitted the way he heard the story was like a game of broken telephone. And back to biz, this is clearly a talking point within the players in the game. Yes. He knows what the guys are talking about and they're talking about this. And it sounds like a lot of guys are a lot more uncomfortable with it than we're hearing through people like Freeman and through the Columbus Blue Jackets. Because they because what do hockey players do, guys? Uh, they respect the man. They are hierarchical. They they are not guys that no way ch- that's a word. Yeah, it is hierarchical. Yeah, they, they like a, <laughs> not not a chance. It is a word. Uh, check it out. <laughs> We're getting into a fight. Um, <laughs> they they don't want to rock the boat. No, you're 
And, You're absolutely right. And so what happens is instead of going to the powers that be, yep. they'll just talk amongst themselves. Now, mm -hmm. Biz's original statement, and I think this is an important point, talked about a player relaying information. Yep. The actual text message that he got, he said, oh, Babs is doing this. And, it, and I think it referenced Boone Jenner. Um, the player, I don't believe in Biz's original statement from the text message, was somebody who had directly dealt with it. So the text that Biz posted directly to Twitter about one that text he got. Out of, I'm sure, dozens he received. So he got one text that said, you got to sneak into your pod about Babs getting guys to show their photos on the big screen. He's doing it to guys in Columbus now. Same shit he did to me. Guys need to know that's coming. It's a fucking joke. So it's obviously someone who was in Anaheim, Detroit, or Toronto. Mm -hmm. It's obviously someone who... Did play under Babs at some point. Who I talk, knows, man? I talked to a few people that I know, one of which did play for Babs yesterday. And I said, do you believe it? Person said, yeah. So, now, now, that doesn't mean anything because clearly they had never had it and it had never gone through and, and, and whatever. I think, I think what we have to understand here is that I, I think the bigger picture is that Columbus has a huge amount of investment in making sure Mike Babcock looks squeaky clean. Uh -huh. And and so you have to understand that okay, that 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 press kit that that, that we got, you know, from the the, the Boone Jenner and the Mike Bab Babcock statement, we're talking to the head coach, we're talking to the captain. Again, it goes back to what about the players who may or may not make the team? Who feel like if they say I'm uncomfortable with that, like Johnny Gaudreau said he would have if he felt uncomfortable, well, that, that's instantly a mark against you. Now, I don't want to talk about my private life, Babs. I just want to talk about work. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's that was lost in in the point made on spitting chicklets is they, they yell about like, hey, go figure out the power play. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of what these hockey players who are uncomfortable with this think about Mike Babcock. They're like, why are you asking me about the photos on my camera roll? Go figure out who's playing on PP1. I also... Like, again, I, I don't know if there's anything fundamentally wrong with being like, hey, like, how's your family or whatever? No. But uh, it was presented in a way that made it sound like a demand. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, again, if you're a tweener and your coach asks you for something, how much, how much license do you have to say no? So that's you the don't. thing. That's the thing. It's players feeling like they don't have agency. So let's say he was uh, innocently being like, Hey, let me see some, first of all, like, can I just tell you a fucking story? Why do you got to see it? But okay, fine. You want to see my family so you can picture them. You see, saying it out loud sounds fucking Hey, Maddie, yeah. can I see some <laughs> pictures on your phone? Uh, Isn't that fucking uncomfortable? Yeah. That was uncomfortable. Right. But it, it, I, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. By the way, Maddie, don't show in, me in pictures. These, don't. In these contexts, like just it, follow you on Instagram. It's set up a little differently where these, there's like been formal presentations and things like that. Like it's clearly a team bonding, quote, team bonding exercise that Babcock has used multiple times throughout his history as a head coach. And guys, a lot, some guys aren't a fan of it. And some guys can just. Team bonding why. is going paintballing. Yeah. Team bonding is not is not that and and listen if you think it's weird if you don't think it's weird i just want you to imagine going into the office tomorrow and your boss asking you the same question show me that's what this is show me a picture of your kids i you, actually there's I, a reason you haven't had seen somebody. leo for quite some time like because people got fucking weird and so i'm not posting them anymore that's fair i'm not posting them anymore people are too fucking weird that's fair man yeah that's fair and it wasn't from anyone who had any power over me and, and, and so this is the, the, the conversation for me is it, it's less about who, who's first off, both sides have an unquite now both sides, neither can back down. Biz is not backing down. The Blue Jackets are not backing down. They have set their lines. We may never know the truth about how this really went. Uh, it's probably somewhere in the middle, as it always is. But what I would say here is this is the problem that we talked about when Yarmo Kekalainen hired Mike Babcock. It is not, this issue for me is not about Mike Babcock. So much it's, it's about the absolutely mind-boggling decisions that Yarmo Kekalainen continues to make. He... I mean, this is, this is his final bullet. Why, it okay, has to be. But why, first off, why would you... You got a you got a young team. Mm -hmm. You got a market that's great for newer coaches. He's never gone that way. 
Well, except for the one guy who was on Tortorella's staff for the last couple of years, and everybody hated that from the beginning. And guess what? The Blue Jackets were fucking terrible. No one had time for that. No, one, not even the Blue Jackets fans. Instantly, when he was announced, people were like, "Fuck this! This is going to be bad." They had fiery. They, right. a, they they hated a guy I had never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Blue then Jackets I was like, "Oh, they're bad." Though. So they are so intense. For me, I want to figure out how Yarmo Kekalainen, a guy with one playoff victory, like series victory to his resume, what in a de- decade? His his Ever. resume his resume is as good as the, the Leafs. Franchise in the franchise has won one playoff series. Well, and it's Ever. and it was him, and it was a while ago. Well, I want to understand two. If you want to split hairs with the qualifying round, you're on thin ice. Yarmo must know that. Mm-hmm. You're on thin ice, and this is your guy. It goes back to what we discussed in early summer, spring, whenever the hell he was announced to be hired. I think it was April, but he couldn't be hired till July or right. whatever. Yeah. Why Mike? Not because Mike can't coach, not because Mike can't reform, but A, every interview Mike Babcock has given, he's almost ne- he's never apologized. He's never even suggested that he's changed anything. Number two, Yarmo, this is more work for you. You have to manage this man's history for the entire public because if this was anybody else, if this was Bruce Boudreaux asking for pictures on your phone, I bet you people wouldn't have reacted the same way. But it's Mike Mind Games Babcock. So there's two very interesting points there. One, you're absolutely right about Boudreaux. And one of the first things I thought of was, I mean, let's not forget in recent memory, they had John Tortorella as coach, who is known as a a cantankerous hard ass. Hard ass. There's a good word at, at times. And the Blue Jackets knew that when they hired him and the players knew that. And remember the story of there was uh, a moment early on in his tenure with the Blue Jackets where the players said, Mike, you got to chill. Or, or sorry, John, John, you got to chill. John, yeah, yeah. You got to chill. I don't know if he really did, <laughs> but. But they were a good team. But they were also willing to be like, all right, John, that's enough. And like. I've heard enough stories that I believe it, that for all his warts, uh, players are willing to go to the wall for John Tortorella. You don't hear those stories with Babcock. So he's not getting the benefit of the doubt. Really, from you hear the complete opposite, where guys just want to give up and not not play for him. Yes, like, yes. and I he's not well liked at all. It's such a it's such a weird hire. Why would you bring in somebody that your players don't like? Well. Now, wait, though. So another really underratedly um, uh, alarming a part of uh, a part of all this, um, the Friedman's 32 thoughts article, I uh, probably didn't get the play it deserves because it's, it's not as sexy as biz and some of the colorful language uh that he responded you, with an expletive yeah <laughs> <laughs> you imagine elliot friedman go fuck that guy. Like, <laughs> no i can't i just i cannot but he said i don't know if the blue jackets were prepared for this yeah basically i'm paraphrasing that's their fault that's that's yarmo's fault it's brainless it's completely brainless. you have to know that we knew that and we're just three idiots in a room like I guess they thought it's it. it Babcock is a fan of a fascinating litmus test because we talked about the string of coaches who got fired. Mm-hmm. Uh, st- remember, Bill Peters got fired shortly after Babcock, mm-hmm. and we talked about them all in the same clump. And then at some point, a little later, we were like, "Okay, but like, not all bad things are equal." Right. It was yeah. You know, it was Bill Peters. My it was Mike Babcock, Bill Peters, and then Joel Quenville. With all within uh, a year and a half, was it not? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. It was all back to back to back in like a yeah. two season span. And not all bad things are created. No. Either. Yeah, and I think I'm forgetting something. So what what we talked about the the reason I'm bringing this up, it, we talked about Babcock and and Bill Peters in the same breath. I was like, well, Bill Peters will never be back in the NHL. I don't. think. You didn't say WHL though. I didn't say WHL. Maybe I should have. But Babcock, I was like, is it so bad? Like, listen, I'm not hiring him for my team. But is it so bad that none of the 32 teams are bringing him in? Well, clearly there's a team desperate enough. And, and they might even be good. Well, and like, think about it. Like, would the Blue Jackets, under normal circumstances, have a shot at this coach? No. Absolutely not. And, like, again, no offense to the organization, no offense to the market. We always talk about Ohio getting a bad rep, but no shot, absolutely no shot. They have an opportunity to get a 
really accomplished coach, I assume for cheap ish, right? On a two year deal. It's right. only two years. On a two year But how deal. did how did you just describe him? A really accomplished, accomplished coach. coach. Is he a good coach anymore? That's I I don't crazy. think so. Thank right. you. Right. We saw but, look at the way he played it in Toronto. Did Yarma watch any of those tapes? But For, just hockey. If you're the Blue Jackets, you go, listen, we don't these opportunities don't come up all the time. Let's let's go for it. I'm I'm trying to You're trying to justify Yarmo yes. Kakalining making a bad decision. Well, and I but, yeah. but I think that's I'm also getting into character of that's yeah. his reasoning because <laughs> well, you look at right. you that's say yeah he's very accomplished but they need to to take a step back and say is Mike Babcock the type of coach who can coach in 2023 where the world is a different place and what he's been doing for the last 25 years doesn't work anymore? So we're, His we're, last we're going playoff, in two different directions here. Yeah. Like you're oh, talking yeah. about he's not even a good coach anymore. I agree with you. <laughs> um, but what, what I'm trying to say is like if you're the Blue Jackets, you're like this is a really rare opportunity to get uh, mm -hmm. like we, we do not get coaches with this resume. Yes. Uh, the way but, you're outlining their reasoning makes sense. But right, but, although that's somewhat disrespectful to John Tortorella, but he was also coming off a really bad yeah, experience with he Vancouver. He was a very similar situation. Yeah. Yes. Uh and, and you're the Blue Jackets and you look at this and you go, "Well, that stain will wash off." And what they're discovering is no, no not really. Not well, anymore. Torts going it's, to the Flames dressing room and challenging them to a fight is a lot different hilarious. than the oh, sorry. than the mind games that uh, or the the stories that have just come out, and I think Greg Wyshynski made a really good point on Twitter. Uh, he said the thing about Mike Pabcock is that a this shit is never in isolation, and there is always people ready to speak out <laughs> about what they went through with him. Yeah, it's true. B, I've never seen a coach have as many enthusiastic detractors as Babs. The only other one I can think of is Mike Keenan. I think Alan Vigneault has some... Mike Keenan's yeah. more public, but Alan Vigneault... Michelle Therrien. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, well, at least in Quebec, for sure. As much yeah. as we don't want to admit it, a lot of these hockey jobs and these hockey circles that you get into are just a matter of, hey, do you got friends? Yeah. Do they like you? And people don't like Mike Babcock. Well, and it starts with the players. It's that, So don't bring in somebody that the players fucking hate. That's an important thing. Like It's really difficult to get kicked out of the brotherhood. But at some point... Enough NHL people were like, you know what? This Mike Keenan guy's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Out with you. Go win a Gagarin Cup or something like that. Still the only coach to ever win a Stanley Cup and a Gagarin Cup. Okay. I, I was want to say, when remember. was the last time? Was Mike Babcock's last playoff victory in like 2011 with Detroit? 2013. Now, I know that that's maybe not Columbus's goal. Their their goal is really just to squeak in. They got to get into the playoffs. That's the That's got to be the goal. Eh. But... Yarmo's on a two year deal. Babs is on a two year deal. Yarmo tried a rookie coach. Uh, everybody in Blue Jackets land was told him not to do it. He did it. Well, guess what happens? They stunk. Uh, so now he's going back to what he knows, which is get hard tack um, veteran coach who's coming off a pretty rough go. And I, I just, to me, this all comes back to him. You know, I, I want to understand. Why Yarmo Kekalainen made this decision. I want to understand why he wants this headache. You know, it's so funny, right? So there's so many players that get uh, that get tagged with, uh, oh, he's difficult. Oh, he's a difficult personality. He said he speaks his mind. When does when it comes when it yeah. fucking comes to coaches, they're like, well, he he coached a game once. He he won a cup a decade and a half ago. I, I just I do find it funny, man. Well, how about like? Uh, you know, player treatment aside, if how about managing this person? How, I'm going to hire a guy who deliberately um, disrespected his boss's decisions multiple at, times at every turn and gone and fired. publicly and publicly. He would. There's. I believe in my heart of hearts. I haven't heard this, but I believe Babcock would not have made it to the beginning of the 1920 season if it were completely up to Dubas. Well, not a chance. We know that I think it was game five. five. Game five saved his job. That's that. That's when Leafs management said, OK, because they, they played really good in game five and yeah. in 1819 against Boston. And that's when the upper management said, OK, he's he's getting a shot next year. What a like I, I know I know series wasn't even fucking done yet. I do. Dude, dude, like what the fuck? I know I fly off the handle, man. I know I do. But when CJ said that 
on that uh, locker room cleanup uh, episode of our show, I was like, the beginning of next season is going to be a waste of fucking time. And guess what? It was a waste of fucking time. It was a complete waste of fucking 20 games. Yep. Or whatever it was. Yeah. Oh, weird. The thing anyone who was paying attention knew would happen happened. It's so fucking weird how that happens. Do you know who the and president instantly got better? Do you know who the, instantly? Do you know who the president of Columbus Blue Jackets is? Uh, John Davidson. John Davidson. John Davidson's been there since 2012, and Yarmulkek Lions been there since 2013. I think it might be time for a change. Yeah. Well, I, the other thing I, I don't I don't disagree, man. I, I, the other thing the way the way Yarmo's built this team, and listen, getting Johnny Gaudreau was a was a steal of steals. Especially for the price they got him for, like really mm -hmm. good. It's Philly. It's, Philly did fuck that up. Let's be honest. Yes, they had to get Tony D'Angelo. But it's had to get him. Can't afford Johnny Gaudreau. Have to get jo Tony D'Angelo. So stupid. Also, it's worthless until they do anything. Well, uh, okay, agreed. Yeah. So, so, but I'm, I'm just let me start with the positive. Okay. Yeah. Hey, listen. No, you're right. You're right. We got. You got. He's got to take a long walk <laughs> to get this drink you, of water. You had to get. You had to get. You had to get rid of Pierre Luc Dubois because he flat out said, "I'm not going to play for you." Yeah. But based on his shitty actions on the ice, I, I still don't love the way Pierre Luc Dubois went out in Columbus. I'm sure he'd love a redo. Patrick Line was good. I, I don't. Was good value, right? Good value at the time. Hasn't come through because the coach you hired stunk. Um, and and obviously you got Gaudreau and you're. But what? Let me ask you this. And Blue Jackets fans, let me ask you, what are the Columbus Blue Jackets? Young and figuring it out. But what's the identity that they're striving for? That's what I can't figure out. Because, you know, the Blue Jackets under Tortorella, it was pretty easy. It was, what, what did you call it? It was like Metapod. Harden. 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 Just defense, and and you hate playing them. And look at that. The Toronto Maple Leafs got beat by them in the uh, in the playing round. Squeeze blood from a stone, block shots, and grind. Is that what they are now? Is that Johnny Gaudreau's game? Is that Patrick Laine's game? And the reason I ask those questions now, you know, you got really good young prospects, David Juracek among them, who yeah. had a crazy year last year. Oh, the, the future is not bad. No. It's really But not. I'm just, I'm curious about what the identity is here. And again, I feel like this all comes down to Yarmo. This situation that unfolded yesterday is squarely on Yarmo Kekalainen. Here, this is. You invited this. <laughs> you wanted the smoke. Now you get the fire. Whoa. How, how late from my stay up working on that one? I, I That's a good one. I didn't even write it down. That's a great one. Wow. Here, high five. Yeah. I, that was great. My face is pink in that camera. Man. Yeah. Got to figure that out. You don't look that pink in yeah, I think it's, it's at all. Is it the white balance? I look red. What's going on here? It's also the TV isn't. What oh, it's the TV on, no camera. Oh, no. On I'm deep broadcast, here, listen, but you're, you're a little pink. It's here, not, pinky boy. It's not, I don't think it's the camera's fault entirely. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be the thumbnail. I think it is. Okay. Wait. See? It's pretty close. <laughs> like, that's... I've been complaining about this for a week, and I don't know what we need to do. See? Oh. Maybe I'm just a red guy. Maybe just a very... Maybe just get hot. Yeah. Well, you... Okay. I run hot. Let's let's talk about this. Uh, <laughs> listen, here's the, here's the really bleak way to look at this it's either bleak or positive depends what side you fall on i suppose um babcock being persona non grata in toronto mm -hmm. um what did he do in the first year all the rookies were playing what what did he do that got everyone so mad uh well i mean he put didn't he put mitch marner on like the fourth line for a month he, it, uh, it wasn't a month. I'm sure his agent will tell tell you it's three. I'm pretty sure it was two games. Um, brought Marner in a room. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Said who's the hardest worker. Mm -hmm. Put him in a tough spot with his teammates. Yep. Wrote it down. Made, made Marner, Mar Marner write it down. Fuck with his head. Yep. Etc. You know what else he did that year? Took a team that was in last place the year before and made it to the playoffs with a team of scrappy rookies. If you're the Blue Jackets, you're like, yeah, we could do that. <laughs> what if that's us? Yeah, we got a goalie. We got, we got this guy on D. We got this guy up front. Yeah, we could do that. We could absolutely do that. So that is the, the cynical, bleak way of looking at it is, um, even though I do think Babcock's uh, um, stock in hockey as a coach is falling, 
I, I think the Blue Jackets, from a hockey perspective, could easily look at this situation and be like, yep, we can make the playoffs. Yeah, and it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous when you you're like, oh, Columbus could actually be good this year. And not like good as in their top five team in the conference, but like they could sneak in. Competitive? Sneak sure. In. Yeah. Why who not? the fuck? Who <laughs> had the Leafs making the playoffs in, in 16, 17? Nobody. No. Only Jesse, Nobody. actually. Did I? Jesse did I say. Remember. Jesse said. I think, no way you remember that. Yeah. No, I do remember that. You said it. And then we got to a certain point in the year and Steve's like, if they don't make it, it will be a disappointment. But but Je- you well, and I both, they were in a playoff. Spot but Jesse the whole did time. say, "I want to say this in 1617." He's like, "No, they're fucking making the playoffs," and he was being bombastic. And hey, here's uh, how I know did. he didn't mean it. He doesn't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember that it, at all. You should wear that <laughs> crown the rest of your life if you meant. <laughs> yeah, you, I I don't remember that at all. You did say it. When did I, I start you on the podcast? Well, you started in. Uh, we started this at the end of 12, 13. So you'd have been 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, 14, 15. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so long ago. It was, it ancient. was a while ago. Ancient. 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 It feels ancient. Yeah. It feels ancient. Um, we've been talking about this shit. Has Babcock won a playoff series since we started the show? No. Uh, <laughs> wild. Wild. No. Not good, Bob. Uh, anyway, no. I think we've, I think what'll be interesting with this is if this story truly does have legs. Uh, then it will be ongoing. And it may disappear for a few weeks and come back. I think more likely to be the case is this is an early season thing mm. that probably just goes away. We got to find out what the NHLPA says. So that'll be the yeah. next like bump in the story, like when they come back to us. So it's not, it's going to be sometime before the season. We'll hear from it again. And, and the Blue Jackets, by the way, are going to do everything they can to push the Mike Babcock It's running a really clean operation. The PR team is going to be working overtime all season long. And Steve, I think you're right. Just flat out believing a PR statement from a company that has a vested interest in you believing what they're telling you. (laughs) Guys, you got to You got to question some of this. I saw a really funny exchange um, (laughs) yesterday. Someone tweeted, oh, so then Boone Jenner and Johnny Cadreau are lying. And some guy just responds, yeah. Which, or maybe they had a different experience. Mm-hmm. Yes. It will change again. Mm-hmm. They're the stars. Mm-hmm. Mike does not have a job if he cannot get those guys to perform. You see how quickly you thought critically and. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people didn't do that. It's just not hard. Yeah, yeah. It's just not that hard. Yeah. Guys, come on. I got more faith in it's, you. Than, it's okay than not that. to take a side. It's okay to be like, like, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking a side. My side is I don't really know what happened, but I feel like. It's a, I feel like something stinks. How's that? I've heard enough privately that I don't think this is over at all. Okay. It, listen, mm-hmm. I don't, I would be shocked, shocked if this ended in Babcock getting canned. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't heard anything that necessarily warrants it. Um, maybe a talking to. Like the best thing that, that could come out of this is he's going to realize exactly how tight his leash is. Yeah. I think he's learning now. Yeah. And Yarmo's going to realize they're going to bend themselves backwards trying to be accommodating now, which might take some bite out of his coaching. Like, it might make him less effective as a coach yeah, well, in a who, weird way. Who knows? Or maybe better. Who do I mean? Maybe not being shitty to people, as has been recorded in the past, makes you a better coach. Who knows? Like, all I, all I know is... He probably came into the season thinking he had a tight leash. He learned it's even tighter than he thought. And maybe we actually get to see a new and improved Mike Babcock. Should we do should we move on to a happy story? No. Or do you have Play something else you want to do, Jesse? Oh no, we're gonna end it. Okay. Is Zach Orensky healthy? Is he gonna start the season? I don't know yet. He's still listed on IR at Cap Friendly. Yeah, he had the, accurate that is. He had a soul, shoulder injury and then he was skating this summer. Their defense is gonna be pretty good. Severson, Provorov, Wierenski, Juracek. Um, I think Jake Bean is on that defense. I think there's Boquist, I think, is there. It's a pretty good defense. It's it's really young, really mobile, really. Like, I I almost look at their defense and go, there's only one puck, though. Hmm. Yeah, but maybe you find out who deserves it, and then you trade the other one. Well, so. I mean, Yarmo has itchy thumbs. Yeah, he doesn't mind making a trade. He... The, See how I adapted that saying, itchy feet? No. The future no. of their top six is so much fun. Oh, with yeah. With Goudreau, Line A, Fantilli, Kent Johnson. 
They probably get another pretty good player this year. Too. Yeah, even uh, Kirill Marchenko. Yeah, I was gonna say I, he was a surprise, uh, or maybe he shouldn't have been, but he was really good. One of the most ridiculous stat lines I've ever seen. Yeah, the Russian Brandon Peary. Would he, would he have twenty four goals and no assists? Like twenty four goals and I want to say like four assists. Yeah, Jesse's gonna. Oh, you mean like his stat line last season? Yeah, nobody yeah. predicted uh, that. Twenty one and four. That's yeah, just minus twenty three. I mean, they were pretty bad. Guaranteed, that's not bottom five. Go click. Go click. I, I, this is cat friendly. They don't. It's not like. Yeah, but no. Click on the team. Oh, their team. I don't have their team stats. You stink. What are, I'm on cat friendly. You I'm on stink. His, I'm oh no, on it would page. just take it to their page. Yeah, you're a bum. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. I That's can't nice. just click anything. Who did he get his first assist of the year against last year? Toronto. Of course he did. Yeah. Of course he did. Uh, he had go like Leafs. 15 goals. Go Leafs. Go. Go Leafs. Go. Let's go Leafs. Um, Fuck. <laughs> let's go Leafs. Um, okay, so a fun happy story. And this is one of progress, and I love stories like this, is uh, Canadian Tire, which has already said that they were going to put 50% of their marketing dollars behind women's sports by 2026, uh, are joining uh, with the PWHL to sponsor, um, well, they're going to be a, a founding partner, uh, which I think is pretty amazing for uh, Canadian Tire, but obviously they, um, uh, they're they going to be the, the title sponsor of the draft uh, coming up here on September the 18th. Um, and, and listen, normally like the Canadian tire doesn't advertise with us. So like, we're not getting, uh, I would love it. Yes. it is, uh, but it's not like they're, they're coming to us and being like, well, can you, can you slip a mention in here? But I think it's really important when you're, when you're founding a league or founding an organization, even like ours to get those founding sponsors in and you know, you want people to be able to spend money with you. And this is going to be major for the league in terms of stability. That's the key right now. This is why they started with six teams is to keep it small, to keep it stable, to get people in the door, to show that there's a return on investment to sponsors. And then you expand. Yeah. Well, and it's it matters that it's such a big name, right? Like huge. Well, I mean, Canadian Tire is not just Canadian Tire, right? It's Sport Check. Well, it. But like what I'm saying is they could bring in. Oh, yeah. When one of our founding sponsors is Frank's Pizza. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, who the hell is Frank's Pizza? He's from he's from Sicily. Yeah. It's oh Frank. Oh, hey. <laughs> and you oh Fra Frank's Italian food? Oh, Sicilian food. Oh. Yeah. He's gonna sponsor the PWHL. Oh, no, but what I'm saying, like, and but there's room for Frank's Pizza as a sponsor, but you want to hear about wanna, Canadian Tire. Let's first. start with Canadian Tire. Adam's point about starting uh, with six and proving the point is so important because uh, Liz and Corral, they made the they were talking about how there's other markets who want a team. Sure. Like Washington has been so good with uh, women's hockey. Buffalo. When when they get there and like they could have tried for eight, but you start at six, you bring in somebody like Canadian Tire and then you go from there. It's uh, they're doing this great. You could have started with 30. And just done a really fucking terrible job. The uh, Canadian <laughs> Tire Corporation owns a lot of hockey related things too. Oh, yeah. Canadian Tire, obviously, which you can buy hockey stuff at, Pro Hockey Life, Sport Check, Hockey Experts, Sports Experts, and Sherwood as well is owned by Canadian Tire. Uh, we all had Sherwood brand hockey sticks, I'm sure, at some point. Um, Got one right now. Do you? Yeah, they. Uh, I think I have a Sherwood stick. Actually, too. I do too. I uh, I I actually have I have the OVO Sherwood collab hockey what? bag. That's what I used to yeah. go really? to hockey's on Fridays with Steve. That yeah, exists. It's pretty sweet. We were at uh, Floorball in New Jersey, and I was like, "Whose OVO bag is this?" That was actually uh, it wasn't that was, even that yours. Was Pavel's, yeah. Oh my has, god. We, yeah, we have the same. He has the he has the Leafs. What? No, he has the white one. He has the one Nylander has. I love that one, but I have the classic OVO colors. I did not creep on his stuff enough. Like he, the free shit oh, Pavel yeah. Barber must get. Oh. God, I can't wait to talk to you guys about that fucking turn. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's so much fun. Is that, is that even a, I think we spoiled Pavel's going to be there. No. They've announced Pavel's going to be there? I hope so. I don't know. I think I think he's. I guess we'll check. Yeah. <laughs> there goes our invite for next year, guys. Thanks. Um, so anyway, congratulations to PWHL. Obviously, Noxie and Cax and uh, uh, SDPN uh, on the whole will have more with with that. I want the team names. Continues. Yeah, we do want the team names. I'm oh. sure that'll be unveiled at the draft. Oh, that makes sense. Well, like the Winnipeg Jets did. Uh, what they brought the, the team back? Uh, September 18th. Okay, I want the fucking team name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what the fuck are team names? Uh, that'll be Monday next week. Toronto um, Blakes. This is interesting. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Imagine. I got a couple of things um, that I thought, because yesterday the Mike Babcock story kind of 
I don't know, soaked up all the oxygen. Like there was nothing else. But there were actually things that happened beyond Mike Babcock. The amount of stuff that dropped before noon. Yeah. Was wild. And this is something I actually meant to get in on Monday's show. And this is that part of the reason Alex DeBrincat didn't want to play in Ottawa was that he was unhappy with his role behind Brady Kachuk. Uh, Bruce Garriak, uh, who for sure is coming at this from a specific perspective. Um, did I'm... I'm just proud of him for being the only person to cover the sense. <laughs> so, so he starts the column with so long, Alex, we hardly knew you. Uh, but uh, it, it basically <laughs> sources say he didn't like his role as the second line winger behind captain Brady Kachuk. If that's the case, then De Cat really did have to go. Now it's interesting because when they hired or when they when they brought Debrin Cat in, the idea was we know you don't really want to play here, but we'd like to convince you to stay, which is a bet, right? Uh-huh. Uh but what what was interesting um is that later on Bruce Garriock in his column for the Ottawa Sun says if Debrin Cat didn't want to be here, nobody was gonna to try to convince him to stay. That that's that sounds object- like not doing your job well. That's objectively not true. <laughs> Hey, well, just bring him here and say fucking nothing to him. I'm so yeah. glad we're reading an unbiased opinion. I know. It's a little, listen. I, <laughs> Welcome to the Sens, dick. <laughs> you will Score some here. goals, goal man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. I think. Sandpaper. You know, I think Timmy Stutzla's. Uh, spit on it. Quote. <laughs> no. Uh, they just hand him, <laughs> hand him a baby shit 69 jersey. Don't even put his name. Just baby shit. 69. No, no. The name on the back is whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's no. Whatever the fuck your name is. F-U-C-K-I-N-N-N-N. So it's fucking. They fucking. just don't know who he is. <laughs> um, One. Uh he, here's the funny thing is in, in his column, he says, yes, the senators knew there was risk involved when they paid a high draft pick to get him from the Blackhawks before the 2022 draft, but they were hoping to convince him to stay. And then he goes on to say, if DeBrincat didn't want to be here, nobody was going to try to convince him to stay. Um, I think I think that he didn't want to be there from day one and they tried to convince him and that's OK. He didn't want to stay. He didn't want to stay. You will get players that do. And I, I love Tim Stutzla's comment on this. Uh, as much as I make fun of him for diving, I would run for, through a wall if he was a Leaf Gut player. Like, I just love him. Oh. Uh, like, this, this, if he doesn't want to be here, then I don't want to make him, uh, I, I don't want to have him there. You know, it's fine to us. I think the whole group, we've been saying it. We want him to stay. We want him to be part of this group. He's a great guy and a great player. But if you don't want to be here, then good luck on your way. And I think that's a, f- which is so much less spicy than it was originally presented. Because it was only the last sentence that was presented. Yeah, it was presented as Tim Stutzla tells Alex Dabrinkit to fuck himself. <laughs> and that's just not I how he learned spit the on his last name. He spit on, on hey. him on the way out. <laughs> hey, baby shit, 69. <laughs> there you go, piece of... There you that, go. That's how the article was written. Yeah. At the top half of it. Here, wait. There, here, go to Adam now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right. <laughs> I love technology. There you go, sweaty right. man. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's no, me, me. Oh, you is con- I look at me. I look like I just got out of a tanning bed. Yeah. Um, a you really look like bad you just got tanning out of bed. A baby shit bed. Baby shit 69. <laughs> hey, I know we just traded like the seventh overall pick for you, but. <laughs> yeah, Adam, I don't Fuck. think you can blame the cameras on this one. Yeah. No, it's genetics. I'm just, just uh. a sweaty guy. I don't know, man. I know. I, I'm blaming. I'm blaming Maddie. Actually, yeah. After the show, <laughs> yeah. Maddie. 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 Show us pictures from your phone, Maddie. Just another one. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, it's it's Tim Stutz like giving a perfectly normal uh, answer, level-headed take in his second language. Oh yeah. Which I'll, you know, I could, I I I saw that statement and I'm like, here's how he could have worded it a little differently. But I liked it. How good for you? Be bold. I agree, but also I uh, I could not explain my feelings for anybody in German. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know the words. So um, Jesse, I'm going to send you something. Anyway, I just thought the De Brincat thing. It's like guys, it, it seems to be because because Garyock was very much like if he's not going to sign an extension, let him go, and that he was very much 
like that. He was, I think, one of the first guys to report that Debrinkat was not going to sign an extension in, you know, February, March, April, whenever that came out. Um, he gave them lots of runway. He sure did. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, they move on. The Sens are probably going to be pretty good this year. Uh, get ready for that, Leaf fans. It's happening. Um, hey, Jesse. Yeah. I just sent you a uh, I sent you a picture of Quinn Hughes. Can you please bring it up on the screen? It's on the screen. Uh, Maddie, can you bring please bring that up? Oh, look at that. Quinn Hughes, captain. We talked about that on Monday. Woo! So this is Quinn Hughes from the Vancouver Canucks official account. And I just want to ask you guys a question. He's only the 15th captain. Yeah. What do you think about that picture? What's wrong with it? What, what game are we playing? We're playing a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? Okay, that looks like Quinn Hughes. His C is glowing. Mm -hmm. They got a... Is the TD ad new? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking at the background now. Huh. I'm looking at Quinn, because I assume it's something with Quinn. Is he shooting the wrong way? I don't think so. I'm no. pretty sure he's a lefty. Yeah, I'm just trying to visualize. Yeah, I got my lefts and right. You got to do the left, right yeah. thing. Yeah, no, it's confusing. No, he's good. Quinn Hughes, 15th captain. That's his number. He's 43. That's his number. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to yeah. see. The, 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 captain, yeah. the, the C is glowing because it's new, right? We like that. That's a good. Oh, I, I love the graphic. That's a good little Shout artistic Shout out the thing. Vancouver graphics department. Anything else, guys, that you see? That's Luongo doesn't have a C on his sweater. Yeah, but he never was allowed to because the NHL, for some reason, prohibits that. Weird. Yep. Super weird. Even though they didn't in the past, there were goalies with captain C's before. What about us? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. No. I'm going to run you through some names, guys. Okay. Orlin Kurtenbach. Yes. Who's that? He was the first captain of the Vancouver Canucks from 70 to 74. And the founder wow. of the Curtain blog. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> um, there was a Canucks blog called the Curtain Blog. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> I still think Canucks blogs actually had the best names. Passatabulous was my favorite. I mm. That was the funniest one. They're, uh, um, uh, I mean, the Canucks as a blogosphere are top five all time. Hilarious. Uh, 75, 76, you have Andre Bourdais. And then uh, in 76, 77, you have Chris Odelson. And then for a couple more years, Don Lever. And then three years in the early 80s, you have Kevin McCarthy. And then for most of the rest of the 80s, uh, until 1990, Stan Smeal. And then Dan Quinn for a year, Trevor Linden, Doug Lidster, Trevor Linden again. Uh, and then you have Marcus Naslin, who was also captain of the Can Vancouver Canucks, mm -hmm. Roberto Luongo, mm -hmm. Henrik Sedin. And then, of course, Bo Horvat, who sent his congratulations. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, I'm counting the, the photos in the background. I only counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 photos. I just got it. Who's missing? Mark Messier. And there it is. They did not include Mark Messier on the graphic. All the captains made the Vancouver Canucks graphic for Quentin Hughes, except for Mark Messier. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that, that is Petty to the max. That came down from it. that came down from the very top. Yes, I yeah. respect it. No, Dude, they. Uh, it. That's on purpose. I need Canucks fans to explain to me, just because I haven't done all the research. Why is the hatred for Mark Messier so deep? Well, he wanted. He basically bounced Trevor Linden from the team. That I know. And then I think wasn't there a was there a Kirk McLean story? Well, I just, I remember they. I'm pretty sure they'd never made the playoffs. Well, yeah. Under he guaranteed in his press conference that they would make the playoffs. Oh, I hate reruns. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, he guaranteed Don't it. Don't do that. And then, uh, and then, yeah, there was some other story. Yeah, I want to know too, but like, it's, man, that's bad. That is really tough. Like, like, listen, uh, I mean, I, it's a Vancouver Canucks relationships with most teams relationships with their former captains are pretty good. Like I even think with the Leafs, like most people are like, Listen, our De the Dion years weren't our favorite, but it's not like he was out there doing bad shit. The team just sucked, right? There he are, was not like a bad person. There are captaincies that fan bases go, like it's... Uh, it's not our best year. Dad, what about that shadowy place that is beyond our borders? We must never go there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's... Like, we, no offense to Brian McKay, but were the Blackhawks at their best when he was their captain? He was... Wait, was he the captain of the Blackhawks? Yeah. I know he was the captain of the Islanders. Oh, was it the Islanders? Okay. Which maybe. I saw a photo of him as the captain of the Islanders the other day. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. When did that happen? When Ole Jokinen was the captain of the Florida Panthers, was it their best years? No. No, but I at least remember that. And I think Panthers fans were like, yes, that was a big chunk of time. And he was he was a very valuable player to them. But And but, like <laughs> someone who had a very good career, but people go, oh, we don't talk about that. It, like Shane Corson as captain of the E. St. Louis Blues. Oilers. Oh. 
No one remembers that shit. Oh, he was. <laughs> yep. I I think he was captain of the Blues too, but he gave it to Gretzky when Gretzky was traded to St. Louis, which is the right call on account of it's Wayne Gretzky. Well, I so here the, the the only thing I wanted to say about this is I can't remember. I can't think of a captain in in NHL history who's more reviled by the fr- fan base and to not include him in this graphic. Again, obviously like listen, we've we've in my dealings personally with Mark Messier, he's been nothing but professional. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey, Steve, Steve, how about you? you? <laughs> Same experience. Oh well, yeah, both times. I don't know. I've heard some stories on this podcast about you and Mark Messier that are a little different than Adam's experience with Mark Messier. I mean, really, ever heard of a cookie, Steve? Steve. Okay, to be honest though, Steve didn't like. Oh, I, I wear, it wasn't. It wasn't no, that. I, I wear wasn't. some blame there. A little. I don't know. <laughs> you no, should, I'm gonna go with a lot. Like, like, okay. It, should okay. The story is that you were at the Mark Messier stamp unveiling at the Hockey Hall of Fame. So there's there's two. The first one is I hadn't even been hired by Rogers yet. I had a terrible haircut, and I went to some Rogers event mm-hmm. that he was paid to be at, and I thought <laughs> I was like, I know I'm not going to be able to get like a Pulitzer Prize winning interview with him right now. Mm-hmm. So let's get a cool social media post. Rogers had these Stanley Cup cookies. They were about this this big. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, Mark, would you take a picture holding one of these cookies above your head? Which I thought was a cute idea. And I feel like most other people would do. He said, uh, no, and walked away. <laughs> now, now I think sometimes I think what gets lost in that story is the way he said no. I don't remember because he said because no. because like most people be like, mean. listen, I don't feel I don't feel comfortable, like if you don't mind. Yeah. And then no, that's a non story. It was mean. But he just said no and walked away. It was a bit dry. Right? Was, like, I it was, was like, it was cold. Okay. <laughs> no, now the China Club won. The China Club. So Nick Kiprios comes on the show 2016. I yeah, think no. it was it was Great right episode. right before the 2016-17 season. There you go. And uh, he comes on and f- that's a great episode. He comes on and he told some fantastic stories, some really fun time capsule stuff too, like with the Leafs. But he tells a story of joining the Rangers and the power that Mark Messier had. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not gonna. Blow I mean, he was a god story. in New York. Yeah, I I could never tell the story half as good as Kipper tells it on the show. Mm-hmm. But basically, Messier was really powerful, and it has to do with the China Club in New York. So very shortly after that interview, I. I'm in the same room with Mark Messier at the Hockey Hall of Fame uh, for a stamp unveiling. I don't even know if he was on any of the stamps. Yeah. I don't even remember. I think he was. I Yeah, you're probably right. I think it was like four people or something. They all got stamps and he was one of them. But like the, the people I spoke to, I don't, I don't remember if Johnny Bauer was at that one or a different one. I think he was at a different one. I spoke to Phil Esposito. He gave me his time. I spoke to Guy Lafleur. He gave me his time. And then I go up to Mark Messier, who... <laughs> Is not even fully facing me. There's a photo, and you can see he's not even fully facing me. He wants nothing to do with this. And he thinks you're scum. He thinks I'm actually shit on his shoe. And like he's not even fully facing me. And I go, so Nick Kiprios told this really interesting story about the China Club and uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember the lead up to it. Uh, but he just goes, yeah, no, I, I don't I don't remember. I go, oh, no, nothing? You don't remember any? <laughs> no, I don't remember. And then he didn't need to turn away from me because he was already not facing me and walked away. <laughs> and that was the last time I ever spoke to Mark Messier. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's it, so it is, good. Oh. Just, I've heard, I've heard <laughs> from people who have worked with him on branded stuff. He's a delight. The oh, delays commercials? It, uh, he did Rogers commercials. I don't remember which too. campaign it was. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if it was for Rogers, but uh, I get. The, I, I think when he's being paid to speak to you, <laughs> he's a delight. Why? Well, Otherwise, go fuck yourself. And you know what? Part of me is like he did a lot of interviews in his day. Maybe he fucking hates them. Well, then don't show up to the event. All right. Yeah, what did you think yeah. was going to happen? Yeah. And also, yeah. why did everyone? Oh, yeah. Phil Esposito. Never been in front of a mic in his entire Adam, life. you know Gila this. Gila Fleur. Never, never been spoken to by anybody. You know what I oh, I hate? When you see an actor at a junket. Oh, my God. And the actor is like, that's the last place they want to be on Earth. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. what? This is your job. 
Yeah. What are you doing here? Show up for five minutes and talk to this reporter from Australia and give them a funny answer and go on with your day. And you know who do that a hundred times in an hour and you're good. And you know who does a great job of that? Fucking Will Smith, man. He shows Will, up and he Will Smith. Like, so I remember doing um uh that movie he was in Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Went to New York. They did it in like one of those old New York warehouses to kind of set the scene. And fucking Cara Delevingne and Margot Robbie show up. They were hammered the night before. I saw it on page six on Twitter that morning. And I'm like, OK, so they're going to be hung over. So they're not going to have much to say because um, uh, they're like best friends. Right. Still are. Um, and, you know, I have a few other actors in the cast that you want to talk to. But Margot had just come off of that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. And it's, it's slipping my mind right now that everybody. Wolf, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street. Yeah, Wolf of Wall Street, which has become a personality trait on certain parts of TikTok. I yeah. don't understand From that at all. The American <laughs> psycho guys graduated yeah. to Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. guys. What the fuck? <laughs> You know what, guys? I like a murderer and I like a thief. Those are going to be the guys I look up to. You ever watch a movie and miss the point entirely? Yeah. <laughs> it's like people that that take Starship Troopers literally. That's another one that you should really look into. Tom was the villain in 500 Days of Summer. Yes. Like, yes. He was He was a dick. Thank you. Like, no. Thank you. Um, no. I love that guy. Um, but I so I, I knew that uh, I knew that their answer is going to be short. And of course they were. Uh, but Will Smith is sitting beside them. And I know everybody hates him after the the Chris Rock Oscar slap, but I will forever be grateful to Will because those guys don't get paid to promote movies. They get paid to do the movie. If they don't show up to the promotion, then they don't show up. And Will was there beside them vibrating with excitement. <laughs> Just like, I'm ready to answer any question you have. And I, and I, <laughs> I, I, you know, you get five to 10 minutes with them and every single answer was great. And we used it all. That is either who you are or it isn't. You know what I mean? Well, I think you can put it on. Do you think that Dwayne no. The Rock Johnson is the PR machine that he is all the time? No, I think Dwayne The Rock Johnson, when he gets home and wants to sit on his couch and eat, I don't know, uh, whatever he eats that isn't fun, I'm sure. It's probably yeah. boiled chicken. Um, a whole cow. He's probably like, oh my yeah. God, I was asked so many stupid questions today. And I'm sure all of them feel that way. Mm. But th the ones that, to me, the w when you bring it, if you got to perform and you got to perform for an hour or two, that's what it means. Like, do you think we're this loud all the time? Well, you'd be right. Ev but the amount of times I see people like, like fucking like a kid in the candy store. Yeah. And then they realize I'm just a person. <laughs> that's not, pretty boring though. And like, oh, I'm talking to him. There's no jump cuts. <laughs> He's not yelling about anything. There. Yeah. Where's your jersey? Come on, do the screamy thing. Why are I you think just wearing a shirt? The point the is store. with the Messier thing. He doesn't want to bring at it. at the damn event talking to Steve. And let just me, give him two seconds yes. of an entertaining answer. Yes. Let me, and let me, let, listen, if, you, if you're not in the mood, I understand, but let me give you the bar. <laughs> like, let me give you the best I've ever encountered. And I've told this story before. Johnny Bauer. Mm -hmm. Johnny Bauer, it was at the Hockey Hall of Fame. I think it was for a separate stamp event because it was the goalies collection. You just love going to stamp events at the Hockey Hall of Fame. I had nothing to it's do. It's the one thing he does. I've been to two. Which is hilarious. I've been to two. No, but you get great interviews. When else would I get to talk to Johnny Bauer, Guy Lafleur? His you know? favorite thing in the world, stamps at the Hockey Hall of Fame. And then they give you the stamps imagine, if you attend the event. Jesse, imagine. Do you have the stamps? I don't. No, you don't. I, don't. I got the stamps. I don't. Hey, Jesse, maybe if they had a doll unveiling at the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame. I'd imagine, be on it like shit on Velcro, Adam. <laughs> imagine they had a stamp event at the zoo. Oh, oh. Zoo stamps. Oh, See, shit. the Leafs used to send a player to sign autographs at the zoo every year, and I went every year. Okay. <laughs> Johnny Bauer stuff. Johnny Bauer. Johnny Bauer. So it's a stamp event for uh, the goalie collection. Johnny Bauer is one of the goalies. He's, I believe, 92 at the time. I ask him for an interview, and he goes, okay, but we can only do two questions because I had dental surgery. I think it was the day before. Oh, my God. It was the day before. And, like, this is very clearly, he looked at his schedule and went, well, I have surgery this day. And I have the stamp unveiling, and I don't, I don't want to reschedule this the surgery, and I can't un, uh, reschedule the stamp unveiling, so I'll just have to roll with the punches. Suck yeah. it up. I used to take pucks off the face. Like, it's probably how he looks at it. And it's, who would blame a 92-year-old man who had dental surgery the day before for being like, no interviews, and like even covering his face when he did? I can't do it. Like even... Like his, his family was there and they were with him the whole time. His, his daughter spoke to me. She could have easily gone. He's not doing interviews today because he just, he had his teeth fixed and whatever, whatever. Yeah. He, he goes, no, 
two questions because I had dental surgery yesterday and I go, Oh, okay, good. And in my Did you mind, ask good questions. Well, I don't remember, but in my mind, I'm like, wow, he thinks I have more than two questions prepared. Uh, <laughs> fucking I didn't. So I ask him my first question with the final syllable of his first answer, his teeth fall out of his mouth. Like wow. his up, I think it was his upper dentures. Sure. Fell right out of his mouth into his hand. He, and like, I wish someone was recording the look on my face. Cause I was like, Johnny Bauer's teeth just fell out in the middle of me talking to him, but whoop, right into his hand, pops him right back in, looks me in the eyes and he goes, what's question two? That's yeah. the bar. And then I asked him question two. He answered question two. I shook his hand. He went somewhere else in the hockey hall of fame and had a beer. Well, well, That's the bar. So when, when you were a captain for an NHL franchise and you see that they left you off of their graphic and they refused to acknowledge that you existed as a captain to their franchise, other people are doing things like losing their teeth and giving interviews. In the middle of an interview. Man, there's, that says something about you. Um, how about this? Uh, and, and he's known for this. This is not going to surprise anybody. Walter Gretzky came to breakfast television when I was there and he invited the entire staff over to his house. No, Walter loves people coming I, over. He, to his he house. did. He yeah. loved it, and he talked very about old it. school. Very yeah. old school. Like, well, come on, come on down, and yeah. and you know we could talk, and I could show you some of Wayne's stuff. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I was like Walter. I was like shocked, and he was not in great health at that time either. No. But he came in and he brought it. It's like the Bobby Bond story. Yeah, I, I told yeah. Him. But maybe oh, this is. You want a book? Here, come to my kitchen. Yeah, and <laughs> Just to be walk fair, into my house. and to be he fair, doesn't to, know who the fuck I am. To be fair to mess. Two meetings is not enough to make a person, right? When you... I'm not calling him a bad guy. No, of course not. If if we were all judged on our bad days, then we all be terrible people, right? Sure. So maybe he was having a bad day, but okay. you're at an event and you are representing your brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and You're's and so we'll leave it at that. Now, he, missed, he missed three straight seasons as the Canucks captain. They missed the playoffs. Three well, I'm curious about what... He's, the, he, uh, he took Wayne McKee's unofficially retired number 11. He took the captaincy from Trevor Linden, lacked any intensity and physicality that marked his game before he joined the Canucks. This is from Vancouver is awesome .com, who wrote about him being left off the graphic. Uh, they don't like him there. Oh, wow. <laughs> they had a good team when he jumped on. Oh, too. and, and Mike Je Keenan. Jesse, you got to read the rest of it because it ties into something we were talking about earlier. He was responsible for the Canucks hiring Mike Keenan, dividing the locker room and dismantling the team. Another reviled coach. Mike Absolutely Keenan. reviled. They, a, a dude who won, and despite winning, everyone was like, you know what? Beat it. Yeah. You stink. Yeah, get get ready to learn Russian, buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Um, I can't even remember. I I, that's a I meme. Did. I know. It's, I think it's Adam Silver or something. It's, no, it's 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 uh, get ready to go to China. Yeah, the, yeah. The Chinese. But it's an Adam Silver Chinese. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to China. Well, that's what NBA Twitter like, loves but, to say to anybody. Yeah. Which is, yeah. It's, yeah. They said that to Dylan Brooks. Yeah. He got $80 million. Yeah. No. Because, um, uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we've got <laughs> Adam Lowry was named captain of the Jets. Um, if there is a player that embodies Winnipeg on that roster, to me, like tough, hardworking, you know, uh, the, the type of player, like Toronto loves this too, the lunch pail guy. Uh, however, the hockey people describe this. Adam Lowry seems like a really good pick because he's been there forever and knows the team, knows the um, knows sort of the team culture. Hopefully, he's a part of the team culture getting better. But um, it seems like a really good pick for them. And I'm happy for them. People are pumped. It makes sense. I mean, <laughs> Mark Shifley seems like the obvious pick. How do you make it him? If, like, forget you know, his ties to Blake Wheeler or any of that. He's not committed to the team beyond this season. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way Shifley could have been captain. You can't make it him. No. So who else do you make it? Um, the only other candidate I really see is Josh Morrissey, I guess. I, I think maybe Kyle Connor. And maybe they will be captains eventually. But Lowry is obviously very involved in the community with initiatives as well. I think specifically cancer initiatives. <laughs> and he's also the guy that's like doing all the ugly work. Right, the penalty kills and the shot blocking and all this, all the stuff that you know isn't fancy. Well, and and the three guys I just mentioned, I didn't mean to do this, but I'm I'm looking at the cap friendly page that Jesse has up. The three guys I just mentioned are the guys who are committed the longest. They're all committed to three years or more. No one else is. <laughs> there you Except go. for maybe guys on entry level. Yeah. So to me, he's a good captain, but to me, it's an interim role, and not uh, interim like. 
saying that I, I'm saying I'm saying that at the end of his three year contract, mm -hmm. Winnipeg will probably be even if they extend him, they will probably be ready to to offer the captaincy to the new incumbent best player. You and might, there's nothing wrong with that. You might be right. Yeah, but that person's not in the organization yet. Yeah. Maybe not. Like <laughs> I think yeah. Lowry, if we're waiting for that guy, it might or be maybe a it's longer. Morrissey at that point, right? Yeah. Well, there Morrissey's 28. You know, like, yeah, he'd be 31 at that point yeah. or 30. It's not like he's he's a 20, 20 year old Austin Matthews. You know, you're waiting for him to mature or something. Like yeah, that. He's, well, a, he's a good pick. Um, yeah. uh, uh, making the rounds on Twitter this morning um, is um, some of the NHL media photos. And oh, no. <laughs> I hate to clown him like this, but Connor McDavid just looks I don't I don't even know how to describe it. Uh Jesse, can you bring the pictures up there on your text message? Um, uh, miserable, I think would be the word. And it's not because he people are like, oh, maybe. I think Drew made this joke too, which everybody does this. Um, it's, uh, it's another year playing in Edmonton. I don't know. I feel like he enjoys playing in Edmonton. <laughs> but he does not enjoy having his picture taken. That is... <laughs> like, look, like, like, and, and okay. some people maybe resting wise don't look happy. Uh, yeah, he's one of them. Yeah. It looks like he wrote like Wuthering Heights in the 1800s, you know? <laughs> he, if it, it, just a, a very, very, um, uh, what's the word? I, I want to say, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of intensity inside. There's a lot of conflict. If, if you made that photo black and white, you could easily put narration over it. Dear Ma, stop. Made it to Gettysburg. Stop. <laughs> Confederates are coming over the hills. Stop. Yeah. We'll attack at dawn. Stop. It's look look at okay, which of the four photos best illustrates genuine hatred? I'm gonna say the first one too. Maddie said the first one. I mean, is the is the it's, idea to be intimidating? No, the idea is um most make me feel like you want me to die. And to me, it's, I think, top left. And I'm taking, oh, listen, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Do it. I know he looks completely fucking miserable. I think this is a guy portraying that he is ready and willing to tear the tongue out of your throat to win a Stanley Cup. Do you think he accomplished that goal? Uh, What, to convey that message with his face? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is already the scariest player in the league. Mm -hmm. He won the scoring title by something like 25, 30 points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, it's funny to clown on him. It is. But that's the face of I'm winning the fucking cup this year. Okay. Okay. All right. No, I don't think any team expects to win the Stanley Cup the way the Edmonton Oilers expect to win it this year. Really? They expect to Is win. Is that what you think? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think uh I don't think they're necessarily the odds on favorites. Mm -hmm. No one expects to win it like they do. And no one expects to win it like he does. Now, I want to compare and contrast this with um oh, I'm trying to find it, the Phil Kessel Team USA photo. And I'm trying to find one that's that I that we can use without getting in trouble. But you know the team oh, USA one of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, where you know the the famous one where he's like, yeah, it's just really funny. Uh, it was ahead of Sochi, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Here we go. I can I can get it. This is the the <laughs> this is the the photos that Phil Kessel had. SB Nation has them posted. Of course they do. Um, Jesse, pay, pay your writers. So, who do you like better? Do you like Connor McDavid looking intimidating? Where do you like Phil Kessel going, I'm going to win a gold medal at the last Olympics the NHL will ever play at? Ever. Isn't that nuts? Well, it's, it's what it was, yeah. We watched that in your mom's basement. Yeah, this is 2014. Sorry, I meant your floor. <laughs> oh my God. That was my floor. Jesse's pulling it up. Yeah, there's, oh yeah. That is good Yeah, shit. now scroll down a little bit because there's another headshot that's no, never talked about. He won three cups. Oh, not no, that. That, was, <laughs> that was a green bum. Uh, he won three cups oh, after that photo was taken. This is all I got. Okay, well, this is, this is what you said. Well, no, there was more in that, but uh, maybe it's being blocked. Who knows? Way to go, Adam. Yeah, that Phil Kessel. Way to fuck up the whole show. So, do you are you more intimidated by Phil or Connor? Uh, Connor. Yeah, Connor. Okay. Connor looks like he would cut open your skull and feed you your own brain, 
like fucking Hannibal Lecter in whatever that Hannibal Lecter movie was. I think it might be called Hannibal Lecter. I think it might be called I don't Hannibal. even know. I don't even know. It's whatever one came out in either the late 90s or early 2000s. Now, um, uh, there's a couple of things I want to hit on before we go to the press conference. The first one is Aaron Rodgers. Oh, Monday night football, man. four plays into the game. There is a, well, not even before that. Before that, there was a shelter in place order in New York because the rain was so crazy. Before anybody got in the stadium, there was a shelter in place order because the thunderstorms were crazy. Now, New York in August and early September is thunderstorm capital of the world. Uh, they have a ton of rain. It gets very humid. Uh, but when you're playing on turf, it makes the turf a lot slippier than, than say, right. grass, at least in theory. So Aaron Rodgers um, obviously goes out and plays, and we all know what happens after. Four plays in, he kind of rolls back, snaps his Achilles. That's been confirmed. But I wanted you to watch this news report from Wisconsin, home of the Green Bay Packers. This is the greatest thing in the world. A Wisconsin bar offering free drink drinks if the Jets lost. Rodgers went down early, and they started running up the tabs. But then what happened? Let's play it, Jesse. The only thing we're going to get demonetized. Oh, we're going to get demonetized. Never mind. So what happened was, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man, YouTube. No, you don't need the video. You just tell the story. Yeah, just tell so the story. I guess, so what you see is you see the reporter's recorded clip. He's been there all night, and what a reporter will do when they're live on a, on a scene is they'll uh, build a story, send it back for editing, and then the news anchor will introduce the story, and then the reporter will come on live after the minute 30 clip and say, well, here's where we're at. And so when you get to the here's where we're at portion of it, in the background, it's overtime. And you can see the um, the bar, everybody at the bar go, oh, because <laughs> what happened in overtime, Steve, who has Josh Allen in his uh, uh, in his um, NFL fantasy. fantasy? Well, the Buffalo Bills fucked it up. And the actually the New York Jets did some pretty incredible things and they came back and they won the game. And so everybody had to pay their tab. Everybody had to pay their tab. And I bet there were no fights. <laughs> <laughs> I bet no one got banned from that bar for life for taking it poorly. Also, did you guys see the, the New York radio host? He's a Jets fan. And he's like, if you think we're dead, just watch what, what they did after Rodgers went down. We're not dead. Stop walking around like we're dead. I, I, was I don't like, understand wow. why everyone's like, oh, the season's over. But they won the game. You just watch them win. Yeah, and it was a great win. Yeah, but Zach Wilson's now their quarterback, so I I it's know tough. it's tough. It's tough. Did you see the quote that has recirculated? Because when it was rumored they were going to trade for a quarterback, Zach Wilson said very famously to the report, "I'm going to make it really tough on whoever they get." <laughs> and then and then they're like, "Wow, he made it really tough." Yep. <laughs> Man, a hundred percent tear. Oh, there's no way he's back. I think he's coming back. I think not this back. season. No, 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 not this year. I think he will be back next year. Yep. Also, I wanted to let you guys know if you're in the market for a media job, USA Today is hiring a Taylor Swift reporter. Mm. Why is why is this getting clowned on? Well, I don't know. I think it's because maybe, listen, it sounds a little ridiculous. I get that. But there is a real um, measurable impact that Taylor Swift makes on every city she goes to. And it is... It is in consideration, although not proven yet, that she may have saved the United States from a recession, which may end up happening anyway, <laughs> this summer, because every city she went into generated so much money. She has like a gross domestic product. Oh, yeah. Like, what, there are, are there more Taylor Swift fans in the world than there are fans of any hockey team on the planet? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, I, definitely. Yeah. Are there more... Taylor Swift fans than hockey fans. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. I'm going to say definitely. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you should have uh, a reporter follow around every band or artist, but Taylor uh, Swift seems to make some sense. It makes perfect sense. It's also like, this isn't an uncommon thing. For the longest time, Brian Windhorst, who is an ESPN NBA reporter, his job was just following LeBron James. 
Like well, LeBron James is such a big universe in and of itself that they had a guy who was just in charge of LeBron James content. Yes. And like this isn't so I was like, this is just media. And I don't understand why this is a big Twitter clown on these guys for hiring somebody to cover a story that's very big and needs a dedicated reporter. Uh, Taylor that's Swift stupid is giant. Because I'm still in the third she grade goes, in my head. She goes to a, a city. Like fucking L.A. and says, what's your biggest stadium? Oh, 50,000 seats. I'm going to sell that out eight days in a row. Yeah. You know how many people that is? And she goes around the world and does this. A, a reporter can cover this for a full time job. Can I tell you, my wife has been like, Steve, you I need you to whore yourself out. Like for what? To some sort of brand to get tickets to this concert. And I was just like, you don't understand Money cannot purchase you tickets to this. No, you to can't. Any of the six concerts. Mm -hmm. Six. Yeah, He's Toronto's got six dates. Six at the Rogers Center. 49,000 people 49, at the Rogers 49. Center with their adjustments. Yeah. You know, they took they took a couple thousand down with the new seats, but so it's that's like, okay. It's like 300,000 seats. Yep. And the wait list is something like 22 million. Our media corporation isn't going to cover that. <gasps> I wouldn't expect you to, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she thinks like Sonnet Insurance is going to send me to a Taylor Swift game, mm -hmm. like they send me to a Leaf game. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry, SDPN isn't getting credentials for that or the NHL. No, they're not. No, well, you know what? You know what? We deserve it for the NHL. Damn it! You made a good point about Windhorse. I, I mean, if you pay attention to baseball, this happens all the time with guys like Ichiro, who had yeah. reporters following him for 15 years, reporting back to Japan. Shoei. Shoei's got it right Shoei's, now. Oh yeah, Shoei's in, got it. In LA. We went to a, a Angels Blue Jays game and I was like, we have to get a program mm -hmm. so that I have physical evidence that I saw Shohei Otani play. You, you went to an average regular season baseball game and you looked at it as history yeah. because it is. Because we're what? It's the best baseball player of all time. Uh, ever. 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 We're they watching have, they greatness. Have reporters who cover that. And then his elbow exploded. But I think. Like, that's him. I think. Uh, He's him. I think. <laughs> Would it be out, out of control to have somebody following Connor Bedard around this year? Would it be out of yeah, control to have Black somebody Hawks following... reporters. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I know, but, like, but only Connor Mark Bedard. Mark Lazarus. I think a Connor McDavid, a Sidney Crosby, a, a, a Connor Bedard. Like, that's a story. I would read every Connor Bedard article. Yes. Every single one. Yeah, that's it's called Blackhawks Game yeah. Reports. Well, yeah, I guess. They stink. <laughs> they're they're um, going to fucking suck. But, they're, but Black Blackhawks reporters are going to be like, but we also have to talk about this shitty team. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> That's I mean, like, that's what game re reports should be this year for them. I would love for for the NHL to have that. It's like we, you are the, you are the, you are the expert on I will Sidney Crosby. Always clown on these people for being demonstrably wrong about this topic. But McDavid's rookie year, mm -hmm. every comment section of every Sportsnet video with McDavid in it was, "Oh, McDavid net," mm -hmm. and they all got fifty bajillion views, and you were wrong. Yeah, people care. Also, they he should have won, won Rookie of the Year. It's a joke. And also, he should have won Hard Trophy and, and when Taylor Hall won it. And the only reason he didn't is because they didn't make the playoffs. And that's so stupid. Yeah. No, nah, well, the, the Rookie of the Year thing I get. He didn't play. You know? Yeah, but he was still sick. Like, all yeah. the great. I mean, he was on the Mick Yakpu line. Benoit Pouliot and, and Neil, Yakupov. Neil Yakupov. I think he was pretty good. All the great. Yeah, but he didn't play enough games. 40-something. Yeah, yeah, he got a, that uh, injury, right? Makes me mad. All the, the greats. It, uh, I've been doing a lot of research uh this summer because of course i have um have fewer awards than they should have well yeah because they're yeah you'd think it'd be the other way around it's inflated for a lot of them it's not i think the only one that that has as many awards as they deserved is probably nick lindstrom who won it norris every year didn't he uh he probably has fewer than he deserved yeah <laughs> because there was a while where he was the perennial nominee like the perennial and they would finalist. just try not to give it to him and then he got it yeah. And then he got it and then he got it. That's a weird yeah, thing about human it. beings. It's like he's objectively the best player, but we've given it to him three years in a row. We can't do it again. <laughs> there, possibly. Sometimes there's a glut of like five guys up for the same award every year. And they sort of look at it like, uh, this guy's never won one and he should have. And they never really did that with like. They did it with Drew Doughty. MVP. He was not the best defenseman the year he won. No, it was his revenant. It was yeah. like his third or fourth best. Who should have won it season. that year? I don't remember that year. I want to say it was Eric Carlson. Yeah. Should have had that one. Yeah. So, yep. I can't. But he's already won one. It was a long mm. time ago. I hope Carlson hey, gets a cup. As the best defenseman, he's already won it. If It'd be nice could, to see Eric Carlson get a cup. If you could hand yeah, out an honorary cup, they would have given Lundquist one. 
Yes. You know, everyone's yes. like, ah, oh, it just sucks that he didn't. Win. Well, he didn't win it. He There's going to be CJ show had a really good chat about that. And, and I think the conversation was, you know, because I think a lot of the Hall of Fame inductees, it was it last year or is it this year? Regardless, didn't win the cup. And they're like, can you be Hall of Fame if you didn't win? And I think CJ made a good point. He's like, listen, with 32 teams and probably more coming, it's difficult to say that somebody wasn't fantastic or amazing or one of the best players of their generation but didn't win because there's so many teams. It's so hard. You don't have to dishonor the past, but like there were six teams. And then there were 16 teams or 12 teams and then 16 and then 21. Well, and it's like 12, a lot different than 32. 12 teams and six of them are expansion. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and get none of the players from the previous teams. It's not like they had an expansion draft. They're just Bobby like, get Orr, anybody else. Bobby Orr just slicing and dicing through mailmen. Yeah, they did have an expansion draft, but it was not the same. Right. Right? Like, just kicking ass <laughs> against six very specific teams. I bet the real Stanley Cup finals the year, you know, the jumping year where, yes. he, where he scored. Yeah. The real Stanley Cup finals were the semifinals, whoever they beat in the semis. Probably. Hmm? Probably because no offense to St. Louis, but the entire the way the NHL was set up was here's the original six teams in one conference yeah. and then everybody else, these new teams with these new players in the other conference. And they would just, <laughs> yeah, just carve their way through the head to heads must have been wild. Oh, my God. Can I ask the press conference? Oh, yeah, let's do the press got, conference. Have we like fired the intro? Two quick ones. Presser. press conference this one plays perfectly into what we were talking about earlier just random k town 2272 having to ask this on our discord server you get three legal poops in any cars you choose whose cars are you picking three legal poops yeah you have to go poop in and three cars of, middle of summer that could be any time you want. Yeah, I know, but I would, I would want middle of summer. Adam, Adam's making sure hard. it's the middle. If it's summer. frozen, I, they can't smell anything. All right. Three legal poops. Who are you picking? See, Adam's got it wrong. You poop in their car in the winter so that they don't smell it, and it stays there for longer. Oh. They'll just yeah. kind of turn and to dust. Then they doesn't it just it. turn white and yeah, turn to dust? It doesn't to smell. Dust. Yeah. Oh, Adam. Uh, I have some experience in this field. No, I'm kidding. Also, um, what are you eating beforehand? <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Old nachos. Ha <laughs> ah. ha. Um, which are all nachos. Anyway. Shut uh, up. <laughs> um uh okay. Well, I'll start with Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I'd shit in his car. I'd shit in his car for sure. No, no like okay. would I shit in his car without Secret Service protection? Probably not. No, no, this is like imaginary. We'll protect you. You get to transport. I'm not gonna there. die. Yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. They won't, he won't even know it's you. Okay, all right. Yeah. No consequences. Yeah. Perfectly legal. Yeah. Shit in Putin's car. So I can't. That's a good one. You can pick Putin. That's a good one. No, no. Let's get different answers. Damn. I think I don't know if I want to go this route, but Mr. Ford. Doug Ford. Does wow. Doug Ford deserve a poop in the car? Sure. After the green belt thing. Or the other things? Who else? <laughs> Mark Messier. Would you put no. Mark Messier? <laughs> oh, you stole! Oh, no, I can't pick Mark Messier! Damn! Were no, you no, Mark I'm not Messier? shitting Mark Messier. You could pick yeah, him. I don't think he deserves a poop in the car. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't there. You were the victim. But but frankly, I just feel like that's a little extreme. I'm for trying Mark to Messier. think of like who would pretend to have good humor about it, but be so mad. Oh, okay. Like a Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Would be like, no, this is fine. This is fine. It means nothing to me. But blah, 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 blah. And then you realize he's the most mad. Yeah. Jordan Peterson probably fits in um, that conversation. You got to also pick people who would be so angry it would just be worth it for their hilarious reaction. Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like somebody who's always riding on the edge. Hmm. Always riding on the edge of anger. I think it would be fun. Steve Dangle. No, uh. <laughs> Actually, you would be kind of funny if somebody shit in your car. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do that. Your reaction, I mean, listen, it'd be later that we would be able to laugh about it. We would laugh about it at the beginning. But uh, I definitely think it would be. I mean, no, Jesse and I would for sure laugh. <laughs> yeah, it'd be We'd laugh right away. But... Hmm. This is a tough question. Oh, I would shit in Elon Musk's Tesla. 
In the Cybertruck? That's a good one. That is not right. ever going to be roadworthy? That's a good one. Yeah, no, whatever car he drives most often. Okay. Shit. You know that that's, that Cybertruck thing may not even happen. Like, it, it's still... Good. Not, they don't exist? Well, no, they exist, but they can't engineer it. The crash Bandicoot-ass car? I thought it was... I thought it was... I'm like, this is a fucking wild design, and I like stuff like that, but literally, they can't put it on the road. It's PS2 graphics. Yeah, it is. It is. Um. So, okay. Ben Shapiro... Elon Musk. Oh, you're going with Ben. Yeah, I'm going with Ben Shapiro. Okay, so you got two, you got one more. Because it'd be really, like, he'd make so much content about it, and he would just become the someone shit in my car guy. That's how mad he'd be about it. He'd <laughs> stop talking about politics altogether. Yeah. He would only talk about the fact that I shit in his car. That's all he would talk about. And, like, I know, like, people are screaming at the screen right now, Brad Marchand! <laughs> Corey Perry! I have grudging respect for those players. Yeah, like Brad doesn't deserve that. Oh, no, he doesn't deserve it. It's also like weird to me to say the name of a person I might meet. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um. Hmm. Damn it! You stole Mark Messier, you fucker. You actual. No. I don't. I don't want Mark Messier. You can have him. Oh, I have a shit, Mark Messier. Yeah, I don't want to do that. He might be might punch me in the face legitimately. No, it's no consequences. No yeah, consequences. Never mind, so no. no consequences. Please. He couldn't do that. I mean, there is a former boss, but I don't want to say their name. Oh. <laughs> you can just say former boss. And a former boss. <laughs> so who are your three? A former boss, Ben Shapiro, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Okay. Solid, solid list. Jesse, who you got? I don't have I don't have a list. You don't have three? No. I don't have three. I can't think of a third name. I don't have any. Who's on my list? He doesn't have any. You asked the you question and you won't answer it. And Doug Ford. <laughs> Doug, I'm, not, I'm not doing either of those. You're not shitting it either. Those are jokes. Um, I don't know. This is too tough. I'd have to. I have to give this a good think. This All right, be, I'm coming back to this Friday. Too then many, say the candidates for each major party so that everyone knows you're even. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Jagmeet, Justin. You can't have Pierre. politics. Um, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like mine's solid. I think Putin is a good start. Yeah. Where are your a real good start. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out in terms of like people that are sort of, cause you gotta, it's gotta be detestable. It's gotta be somebody that you like, when you hear them, you're like, oh, like, you, you know, like, can't always go to head. the top. No. Mm -mm. So, like you can't say Trump, but you can say Rudy Giuliani. Man, That'd that guy is having his trunk shit in constantly right now. <laughs> The shit is, man, um, he's in trouble. DeSantis is a good one. Yeah, I like Ron DeSantis could be on my list. I'd shit yeah. right in his rain boots. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, know I'll I'll take that one. You know what? I'll, I'll take uh, DeSantis. So if you take him, yeah. Ted Cruz. Oh, really good one, <laughs> Ted Cruz. Damn it, that Canadian Ted Cruz, who is masquerading as an American. Uh, uh, Ted uh, Cruz is a Canadian. Where is, it, where is uh, he born? Stop voting for him. Where is he born? Calgary. Calgary? No way. Wow. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Every Calgarian right now is like, no, he's not. <laughs> um, there's that guy. And then who else? I'm trying to. It's tough, right? It's it's, I, that's what I'm trying to say. This is a hard question. Maddie, who's your favorite artist? Ed Sheeran. Actually, he's up there. Like, who, who are you listening to right now? Favorite artist. Yeah. Ed Sheeran when he didn't fall off. I was kind of hoping for like a quick answer, but... Like Anderson and, Pac. No. Love him. Shit in his car. I'm not shitting in his car. Why would I shit in Anderson Pac's car? Because yeah, that's funny. not I don't like that answer. No, I don't It'd like that. No, I like Anderson Pac. He's really a great it. human. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's funnier. Why? Pick the nicest person you can. <laughs> right in their car. They would never expect it. <laughs> right in their car. <laughs> the, so Yeah, uh, but like, who are the most beloved celebrities? Think of all the followers. Like, like I got to think about this, like, like one of those 20 year old YouTubers that has like five hundred million dollars. Oh, Jake and Logan. I thought you were about to say Mr. Beast. No, no. Why not? Mr. Beast. Why do people hate Mr. Beast? What has he ever done? No, uh, you know what? Because like <laughs> I could, couldn't he's even really bring, a nice. He seems like a nice guy. Couldn't he's even bring myself to say when he does things nice for people. People talk about him like, no, they should have stayed blind. 
I just, I don't it's weird, I don't man. Get it, it's man. weird. It was get it. It, that that conversation was so weird. It was weird. Why were people against people? <laughs> Well, you, their <laughs> How <do> you, <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole yeah, he what did a it, dick he like, did it weirdly yeah i don't think they care man i don't he did it he did it in a way I that think, i don't exactly agree with and wouldn't have done it that way myself i think those people who can now see are happy no <laughs> no why are you granting them sight when this world is so painful to look at it's such a i don't know i got my three got, i got my three. give it to me give it to me Ron DeSantis, mm-hmm. Vince McMahon, oh! and Jake Paul. Vince McMahon. Good one. Good one. <laughs> yeah. Good one. And listen, Those are my are three. Like, people are probably screaming like, why not Batman? I wouldn't shit in that guy's car. I, I, come on. Adam, I who's your three? Shit in his car. Well, I got Putin. I got Ted Cruz, which mm-hmm. I feel is a pretty strong one, too. Um, Who are my three? Elon. Mm-hmm. Ben your Shapiro, boss, Ben Shapiro. And oh, and my former, former, bo- okay, former so boss. So I can't say former boss. Yeah, you so can. I'm you gonna, can. We said you could. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't name him. You don't so have that's to. okay. It's probably better okay, that you don't. Man. Probably better that you don't name him. Because I was gonna say the husband from uh, that polygamous show. Oh, uh, uh, thirty million kids and counting, whatever they were called. No, the the what? He's got the weird. He's got the oh, you mean blonde the, Chad Kruger hair? Yeah, the guy that had like sister wives. Sister wives. Okay. Yeah, it's shit in that guy's car. Well, there you go. Uh, he would I, not handle I'm surprised if you were going the reality show route that you wouldn't go James Kennedy from Vanderpump Rules. Oh. You hate James Kennedy. I'd shit in the driver's seat. <laughs> like, you hate James Kennedy. Uh, hate him. I've never seen someone who could kick less ass talk more shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Cody Brown. Is that Cody the, Brown. That's, that's his name from uh, Sister Wives. Yeah. Cody Brown. Well. Bad guys on your list? He's going to be once yep. he sits He'd down. He's a better list. Yep. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have another answer. I think I'm happy with my team. <laughs> no, you need a third. I need a third. You forced me to get three. Okay. All right. Uh, man. Deshaun Watson. Good one. <laughs> that, that is Deshaun good. Watson. Good one. <laughs> and I hope, I hope he trips and falls into it. That's a good one. With his bare hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Steven. All right. Let's get to the next question, Jesse. Oh, last question. Um, this one was from Doug. The two goalies that competed against each other in the 2016 Stanley Cup final are under contract for the same team going into next season. What's the team? Sorry. One more time. The two goalies that competed against each other in the 2016 Stanley Cup final are under contract for the same team going into this season. Who was the 26th? That was Pittsburgh, right? It was uh, Pittsburgh, San Jose. Reimer was the back. Oh, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> it's the Leafs. <laughs> it's Matt Murray and uh, Martin Jones. Oh, wow. Well get done. out of here. Well done. No way. Yeah. The 2016 Stanley Cup final. That's nuts. Goalies are on the uh, same team. I, um, sorry, I've, I've forgotten. Like, I was thinking, like, where's Matt Murray playing now? <laughs> <laughs> Forgetting completely, of course, that he's not playing for the Leafs, but he's paid for completely forgot So about that. Doug followed that up and said, can you name another instance where two former cup combatant goal t- goaltenders ended up on the same team after their cup final? After their cup final. And we got um, two, we got one instance. One instance. Can I have a year? Uh... I can't. Hold on. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me He's going to look. He's going to look. I, I can figure out the year. Um, Because, I mean, well, Quick signed with the Rangers, but he hasn't played there yet. 2014. 2014 Cup Final. So, no, yeah, no, no, that, no, no, no. 2014 is the year they were on the same team together. Oh. Oh, I, I, you want me to tell you the Cup year? Uh yeah, so I'll give you the cup here. Uh, what? 2011, the two goalies from the 2011 Cup Final. Tim Thomas and Roberto Luongo were on the same team together. Florida? In Florida? In Florida. In no what, way. What year? 
2013. 20. They, I shouldn't. I shouldn't give you the final because that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah, that is. Yeah, the that, that's the whole goal. Is yeah, fucking should, trick. I never would have guessed that, ever. <laughs> Peter ever. Thomas and Bobby Lou. Yeah, I remember Tim. They Thomas were being a Panther. I don't remember yeah. them being. Panthers they were on the, the same, same team, I guess, in 2014. Um, there was like a week. This is what Doug said. There was like a week where the Florida Panthers had both Tim Thomas and Roberto Luongo before trading Thomas to Dallas. Ah, uh, so yes, and he had the really weird equipment setup. It was like red jersey, green pads, or so, or no, it might have been the opposite. Right, he looked really strange. So I assume because that trade, that Thomas to Dallas trade happened in 2014. So I assume it was that year. He uh, did have some. He wore some weird jerseys. Was Long after Lo- Boston? Longo was still in he Florida. Had a weird oh, yeah. career. Right. Yeah, yeah. He had just been. When was the Tortorella? Vesna held lost the his game. job. Uh, best goalie on the planet wins a cup. Doesn't attend the White House. And then, like, sort of just disappeared within three years. Would you shit in his car? Crazy career. Yeah. No. no. He's a different dude. He'd catch it before it hit. But I wouldn't yeah. shit in his car. That's yeah. a different dude. That's all. Thanks for answering. No problem. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. Connection complete. Wow.